This is the truth behind the beef between 50 Cent and Puffy. AKA Diddy, or whatever you want to call him today. Now, when 50 was doing mixtapes back in the 90s, uh, Big was gone and Puff was building Bad Boy back. You know, he was working with artists uh, trying to do Bad Boy in the family. And somebody had gave him this guy from Queens named uh, 50 Cent. And he was with Tony Polk and all them. And they looked at it. It's like, whatever. <laughs> and he listened to it. It was like, yeah, it was, you know, it's cute. You know, but he never saw the potential in 50 Cent as everybody else did. But anyway, 50 Diddy's trying to like restructure and look at what's hot and jump on that. He got no time to really start off or work with 50 Cent in the aspect that 50 would need. So, just so happened, after he gets signed, everything is uh, going copacetic. You know, he becomes the 50 Cent. You know, him and Diddy was cool. They met at a party. You know, he's the man. He's 50 Cent. And even though he's new to the game as far as being like the the number one rapper in the world at that time in 03 and 04 you know Diddy is looking like man you know you're making some smart business decisions and the fact that Steve Stout had worked with uh, 50 Cent at that time and Stout and Diddy was back cool this um, brought them back together, you know, like, so they could talk and, you know, about business and deals and all this stuff, and they had the party, and they talked about collaborating on something, you know, and Diddy also liked the fact that he stuck up for him with the, uh, the whole Jada Kiss situation and all that stuff, so he liked that, and he went at Jada and them and was talking about Puff still own your publishing, you know, Diddy liked that. Did he hate the fact that they kept bringing up the fact that he had owed them? Like, man, like, dude, y'all gone already. I let, I let y'all go. Quit bringing up, like, my name and, like, bringing that back up. Like, we screwed y'all. <laughs> so, Diddy was like, yeah, man, we'll work together. Everything's fine. Everything's cool. So... Everything is copacetic. Years go by. Situations change. Steve Stout felt like 50 just slighted him. And he's like, man, I got you a Reebok deal. And this is the thanks I get? <laughs> I mean, every Reebok deal was worth about, about 60 plus million dollars. And he was like, man. This is, I don't get a thank you. But what Steve Style really means is, you just cut me off? <laughs> you know, like, we ain't make no more business. You just like, I got it from here, you know, like, really? You know, I got you started, and like, I, I hope you keep getting checks. In other words... So that's why Steve Stout felt a certain way towards 50 Cent. Because Jay-Z stayed with Steve Stout. And it was like, yeah, I'm going to stay with Stout and we're going to keep going. Stout thought he was going to have 50 and Jay. Didn't work out that way. <laughs> so that's what led to a lot of other stuff that you saw in recent events. So this whole thing is going on, this debacle with uh, Jimmy Iovine and uh, Puffy. Jimmy Iovine got into it with him because Puffy did some, it was some other business stuff that went down that Jimmy didn't like. Clive tried to smooth it over. Jimmy felt a little slighted. So it was like, oh, okay. We gave him this advance money. Okay, cool. 
And a lot of people be like, well, Jimmy Iovine don't have nothing to do with Diddy. Man, y'all just don't know how music intertwines with one another on projects. So, he comes up with this idea for 50. He said, well, 50, this is what we're going to do. We're going to expand G-Unit, and I'm going to pay for it. Like, basically, I just want the look. I want you to get Mace to come back. You know, get Mace, get a deal, get a contract, we'll pay Diddy what he wants and get Mace away from him and all that. Because I just want the look. You can keep 100% of the profit. So that was like, whoa. That's more than what he had from game, anybody else. <coughs> like, this is yours. <coughs> now, who would turn that down? So he goes and tells Diddy, he's like, look, man, you out the red and everything. Diddy, get on that phone. Diddy, you out the red and everything. You don't worry about it with Mace. Like, this the money. You finna get this. It's done. <laughs> like, you paid. You ain't got to worry about nothing. He was like, oh, for real? That's what's up. Cool. Okay. All right. Cool. And you know, then Diddy was with it. Then he was like, "Okay, we got a deal." So Diddy was it was a deal. Uh, Mace's head. They was getting the paperwork together. They could have sent it over to Diddy, and they went on a tour. And they got Mace coming out and Mace doing the songs. And Mace is gonna be G Unit, and everybody is like, he's going back to Mace murder. And he finna be doing this and that, and the money finna come in, and all of a sudden, Diddy just pulled a plug. <laughs> it was like he canceled the deal, and now he don't want to do the deal no more. It's like what? So now Fifty really mad because he was gonna get the money. But I guess Diddy realized what was happening and was like, nah, nah, nah. why would they just do this? Something's not right. You know, and I don't know everybody's angle, so I ain't finna do the deal. Everything was moving too fast. They already got Mace going on. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, I'm pulling the plug. <laughs> so when he did that, 50 was salty as hell. Woo, man, that's when he dropped the song, The Bomb. Kind of explaining a little bit of it, you know. But he was like, "Now nah, you gotta pay me my money back for that tour." So which Diddy took care of, it. wasn't no problem there. So be because both of them were friends with Floyd Mayweather, a lot of stuff got ironed over, and they were back cool. Then the last straw hit. And the last straw was the fact that when they came out and did the song, because uh, uh, the I Get Money record, I kind of skipped over that, but the I Get Money record, that's when they collaborated and really made some magic happen. The remix, I Get Money. And Diddy on there, Jay Z's on there, and uh, they really love that I get money record. They was, man, that's hot. So they did a song on stage. Diddy came on stage, and then Jay Z came. I mean, Fifty came on stage with Diddy. They was all at the show, and Diddy went on stage with him, and then Fifty came up there, and Jay was giving him a look like, "You just had to come up here." <laughs> So, it was a good look at the time, and they had a lot of fun, but fast forwarding it back to the new issue, they're cool with Floyd. The Rick Ross situation comes available for Puffy to get involved and make something happen. Because Jay's about to flush Rick Ross to the side, because they had lost so much money, 
So Diddy come in and is like, oh, I could work with him. I could use a Vicky angle with him. And they grabbed him. And next thing you know, it's oh. Oh. And from that point on, we knew what happened then. Then it was like, yeah, he could be the next Biggie. And 50 didn't like that at all because 50 had a very personal beef with Rick Ross and was trying to get rid of him and get him out of rap. And you, you basically threw him a lifeline. So he looking at him like, man, champ, why are you cool with this dude Diddy, man? This man Diddy just sit up here and made a deal with the enemy. He made a deal with the devil. He sit up there and took your enemy and made him his friend. So is he really is he really your friend? Is Diddy really your friend? <laughs> so you know Floyd gonna be like just the same Floyd. No, no, you good, you good, you good. Hey, 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 hey! If you if you betray me. Hey, if you betray me, it's cool. It's cool. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> so, I'm good. So, that's how Floyd deals with things. He just, like, I put everything in God's hands. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. But Diddy cool. So, what happens is, 50's not cool with it. He takes shots at Diddy every chance he gets. <clears throat> then Diddy got this project coming out, and... and 50 Cent is all over talking about how disrespectful Diddy comments was about Biggie. So he's starting a movement against Diddy. So at the BT Awards, 50 Cent weren't there. <coughs> but at the after party of the awards, like when the show going off, and 50, I mean, Diddy started addressing 50. He's like, yeah, dude, you a hater. And I got more money than you. And your breath stink. <laughs> like, he didn't say 50 name, but everybody knew he was talking about. And this is as the show was going off. You are hated. <laughs> so, it was on from there. You know, and they uh, started competing with every other aspect of business and then 50 just kept making more enemies with all his business decisions because he's basically was copying off of what everybody else is doing and now he's and he was doing the water thing everybody was doing the liquor thing and he was making fun of the fact that they were doing liquor he was doing water and he was like everybody can drink water not everybody can drink liquor now he's with F and Vodka <laughs> and they target is Diddy because they don't like Diddy so they rather pay any other artist that can come in and mess with Diddy so the effing company is like look we can hire 50 Cent he already don't like P Diddy we hire 50 Cent let him be a partner in it the worst thing he could do is make us some money because we ain't making money anyway <laughs> since P Diddy came here and he's been very brash about his liquor and everything else and Diddy don't know how to win small and when Diddy's winning you gonna know about it so that's basically what it is there's no rap beef with Diddy and 50 it's all business and 50 keeps taking shots at Diddy and it's to no avail because you can't you can't hurt Diddy 50's not in position right now that he, he can hurt Diddy. Diddy's too powerful now. This, this is not the Diddy from 10 years ago. He's a lot more powerful now than he was 10 years ago. So. But that's how it all started. And that's where it's at right now. But 50's still going to get rid of Rick Ross. Because no, that kind of music is going to fade out. And this is what I keep trying to tell people when they try to say, well, that's good music. Illmatic's a great album. You know how you know? Because you can go back to it. What Rick song, Rick Ross song do you go back to? It's all the same. No substance. Nothing to grab you. 50 Cent now to make songs that you can go back to. You can go back to his first album. In the club, Candy Shop is still one of the top selling ringtones of all time. 
Magic Stick. All these songs he made are songs you can go back to and play again. They resonate with you. You see, and that's the difference when you got these guys who can rap but can't really make songs. Like Lil Wayne is one of those guys. You know, he couldn't really formulate a song. Like, the third album is when he started working with writers who know how to write songs and construct songs. So he did the Carter Three. That's why you hear some verses were just songs. Like Mrs. Officer and all that stuff. And Comfortable and stuff like that. Those are formulated songs. So, he was able to build some structure there. <clears throat> but really, every song that was structured by Lil Wayne, either Drake had something to do with it on collaboration, She Will... Um, sleep with the most women in the world and all that. Wish I could sleep with every woman in the world. Drake songs, they're formulated. Drake is a writer. He knows how to formulate a song. So, you know. Maybe one day y'all understand. I'm out.